Hi, you made it. In this video, I'm gonna tell you what to learn next, and I'll give you three pieces of advice on how to approach building your own app. But first, I wanna mention that the 10 videos you just watched are actually part of my larger course that teaches beginners how to make apps. There are over 50 additional lessons that are going to continue growing your skills from here. If you'd like to check that out, just follow the URL on screen or in the description below. All right, now let's talk about building your own app. I see this happen all the time. One of two things actually. Problem number one, you wanna start building your own app, but when you sit down to do it, you have no idea where or how to start. And problem number two, you have all of these great features imagined for your app. You might even have wireframe the screens for your app already. It's gonna have multiple screens, login and user accounts. It's gonna have social features. It's going to connect to a database, connect to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and it's gonna have forms for the user to fill out. You know, the whole works. And then you start working on your first feature and you encounter a roadblock. After wrestling with it for a few hours, you begin to realize that it's going to take a lot more time and work than you thought. You get overwhelmed, wonder if it's all worth it, and then you abandon the project. Look, I'm sorry for painting such an ugly picture, but the good news is that I'm gonna tell you exactly how to overcome those two problems right now. Let's address problem number one. Whenever I start a brand new app, I always think about the previous projects that I've built before. This gives me a great starting point. I might realize that the structure for this app I'm trying to build is very similar or slightly similar to an app that I've already built before. Either way, it gives me a starting point to build off of. If you don't have the experience of past projects to draw from, it's hard to know how to start your own app. So this brings me to my first piece of advice. When you're first starting out, build as many small projects or demos as you can get your hands on. There are tons of tutorials out there and even on my YouTube channel where you're gonna build small demos or small apps. It doesn't matter if that demo or small app has nothing to do with your dream app. The point is you wanna build up that pool of experience so that when it comes time to building your own app, you have that experience to draw from. In my course, you'll be building four real apps that you can actually submit to the App Store. I've made each app very different so that by completing them, you have a well-rounded pool of experience that you can draw from for your own app. Now let's talk about problem number two. When you start building your own app, you make the mistake of trying to boil the ocean. Have you heard of that phrase before? How about biting off more than you can chew? The point is, great apps don't usually get built all at once. When I start a new app and there are features that I've never worked on before, I usually break out those features into smaller test projects. Get them working in the smaller projects first and then go back to the main project. So that is my second piece of advice for you. Forget the bigger picture for now and focus on working on each feature in your smaller project. This way, you're gonna get a sense of accomplishment each time you get a feature done rather than getting overwhelmed with the larger scope of the project. When you build the four apps in my course, you'll be taking this approach. Oftentimes, we'll try out a new feature in a playground or in a smaller project before working on the main project. You'll also learn how I plan out the app architecture for my app before starting the code. You'll save yourself a lot of headache and time by learning how to navigate through potential pitfalls before you start to code. My third piece of advice for you is that learning is a very human process. Instead of just learning by yourself in a vacuum, try to find some communities or forums, either online or offline, and immerse yourself. Having that support system goes a long ways towards increasing your chances of success. So in order to provide that human element in my own courses, I decided to give students access to myself. One of the biggest reasons that people join my course is so that they can get my guidance as they're learning iOS. I personally answer all my questions and help students over the hump with the specific problem that they are facing, oftentimes recording videos just to explain something to them. You'll also get access to a private Facebook group only for members of the course where you can form relationships, get help, or just bounce ideas off of like-minded individuals who are also learning iOS. Again, the link to my course is on screen or in the description below. All right, let's recap my three pieces of advice for you. Number one, build as many small demos and projects as you can to get experience under your belt. Number two, break out the functionality of your app into smaller projects. Number three, find a support system for learning iOS. Finally, I wanna thank you so much for learning with me, whether that's through my courses, my YouTube channel, or my blog. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. And if there's anything I can do to help, just leave me a comment below. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in many more videos to come.